Hi everyone, welcome to another Five One Speedway show. This is our second live uh, Five One show, so I am very pleased that this one's going to hopefully be better than the last one that we had with Dan Jilts, which was the, which was the last episode. I did originally list this one as episode number forty one, but the previous episode never happened due to one reason or another. So you've not missed anything, so don't worry about that. But hopefully you managed to catch up uh, with everything, and you saw Dan Dan's interview one with Ben Hotwood and Chris Morton prior to that plus the many other ones we've done so far. But tonight, my guest is uh, a rider who I haven't revealed yet. I thought I'd keep everyone on their tenter hooks and let them find out that uh, my guest is basically a guy of many, many clubs. You know, he's a Mr. Nice Guy of the British Speedway world. Um, and he's won the league with Mildenhall. Hall. Well, he did the, did the five trophy win with Mildenhall, Hall. Uh, and he's recently uh, won the uh, championship with Paul Pirates. So take your guesses now who it is. He is English, even though he has a Danish name. So please welcome to the show, Stefan Nielsen. Uh, mate, oh, hang on, I bet I'll mute you. Oh, hang on, your, your, your mic, oh, it's great. Your mic's not, can, isn't, isn't working. I'll, I'll mute your mic. Great. <laughs> Hello. I can hear you now. <laughs> How you doing, mate? All good? Oh, very well, thank you. How about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. So, uh, yeah, as, as as a live one, you know, it's uh, be interesting. This will be because it's only my second time doing it. So, hopefully, you know, you'll enjoy it. Well, I'm more nervous than you. Well, you know, and you're the professional, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. no, it, it's nice to get you on the show, mate, because I know me and you know each other very, very well from, like I say, from the Milner times and many other times before that. So we've known each other for a few years, which is good. So it's nice to have a mate on the show more than anything. Uh, so so how, how's your winter been anyway? Um, it's been interesting, I guess. Um, obviously, the end, end of the season didn't go as planned. So uh, it's been quite a long one since the 1st of September was my last meeting, I think. So, um, yeah, it's been interesting, but we're finally getting back, getting back to full fitness, doing some gym work and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's looking up now. Oh, that's good to hear, mate. That is really good to hear. Because obviously um, it was a crash at Birmingham that sort of curtailed your season, really, which is unfortunate. What was the actual extent of your injury in the end? Um, I broke, was it five ribs and my collarbone and then I uh, punctured my lung. So, um, it was, it was a nasty one. Um, but yeah, the Birmingham hospital took very good care of me and, uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah. And then ironically you go and sign for them. Uh, for the 2022 season. So, I mean, that must have been... It's, it's a nice thing to do. You're going back to a track where you had an accident, but then you'd be able to get over it as the season goes on. Yeah, uh, it's not my first time I've done that. I did it back with Mildenau as well, funnily enough. Um, big crash there, then signed for them the year after. That sort of thing doesn't scare me or anything. I'm like, yeah, just blank that from my mind. It's, it's in the past, it's happened, and now we, we look forward and... Yeah, I'm enjoying the uh, oh, the signing of Birmingham and Sheffield. So two teams mm -hmm. to start off the season with, which is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to get back racing. It's been a while now. Yeah, it's been far too long for yourself, really. But it was nice, I suppose, at the end of the season to lift that trophy of uh, winning the league and the cup, even though you weren't actually in the finals. Mm -hmm. And it was a long old end to the season, into November. You know, so nice and cold, I can imagine, that Paul, even just watching. Yeah, it was. It was. It was hard to watch them. To be fair, um, I was still nervous going just watching them. But um, no, it was really nice to win that, and there's some great memories. And uh, the team spirit we had was really, really good. Mm. So it was nice to be nice to be part of mm -hmm. it, and yeah, win some silverware, which is obviously the aim of the start of every season. So uh, mm. no, it was good. And it was a very good team that you were around with the likes of Danny King, Rory Schlein, uh, uh, the Worrell, and, you know, and it's just, you know, Danny Hume, you know, people like that, you know, you had a great little nucleus of team and even with, um, was it was it Ben Cook or was it Zach Cook? I remember which one it was now in the team at the time, Ben Cook. Yeah, so, I mean, with an unknown Australian coming in and, you know, it must have been uh, good for yourself to pass on your knowledge of the British tracks onto the new kids, new kids in the team. The team spirit was one of the best I've ever, ever been part of. Um, 
I know a, a lot of them from beforehand, Steve Worrell, Danny King, mm. Rory Sline, obviously spent a few years with them in the past as well. So we already clicked immediately. And then the new guys as well, Ben Kirk, um, Young Aussie, and like, he's just enthusiastic and, and wanted to go out there and do the business. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, the team just gelled really, really well from the start. Um, we, we all wanted to win. And we, we all brought that togetherness and everyone was helping each other in the pits, which is a, a huge part of the of the game. I know it's it's quite individualistic, I suppose, when you're going around on your own, uh, just riding with yourself sort of thing. But it really is a team game and everyone's got to help everyone to, to win trophies. And uh, yeah, they we, we all did that really, really well. Yeah, and of course, with Paul having the... the... Uh, the best tradition in the 2000s era is in Speedway and the top flight. I mean, to c- continue that success to come down to the championship and still win, that's some feat in itself, really. I mean, was there any pressure from promotion saying you've got to go and win the league this year or is it just a case of just do what you can and see what happens? Um, uh, their aim was definitely to win. When when I signed for them, that was obviously a huge aim. And, uh, yeah, they just wanted to carry on that winning momentum, the mentality that they have. And, uh, yeah, it, what can I say? It worked a treat. They always build really strong teams. And uh, there's only going to be a team that are going to be difficult to beat next year as well. So, uh, no, I, I look forward to, to getting back on my bike and, uh, and racing them. No, that, that's good then. And obviously the pool track was a, a track that suited you in the end, I guess, or did it take a little while just to master? Um. I've always enjoyed the pool track, uh, always enjoyed going there and racing. And uh, it was no different with it being a home team. We mm. we did have a few issues with the track. It was a little bit, uh, I don't know how to call it, it rutted up a fair bit during the season. And as we raced on it, it kind of deteriorated and got a little mm. bit worse. But um, the track staff did a fantastic job to, to get it right in the end. And, uh, yeah, just kept perse- persevering with it. And uh, in the end, we... We had a really good racetrack as well. Well, that's good to hear because obviously if you go to a track where you know it's going to be smooth and no holes or anything like that, you know you're going to enjoy it week in, week out, mate. And, of course, the home advantage, Anna, is uh, something different. And, of course, once you did it dialed in, away you went. Yeah. Um, figured out the setup in the end and it, was, it seemed to work quite well. And, and the support as well that they had there, the fans were, were really, really great and always, like, roaring and... Uh, yeah, the atmosphere was really good. So when whenever you got a five one or whatever with the team, it was it was really, really nice to do a little victory lap and uh, see everyone jumping up and down and yeah, it was really good. Well that's, that's good. <clears throat> Obviously the pool faithful, you know, is famous for being having great support down there, you know, and uh, getting behind the team no matter what. So I guess that must have put a uh, was it a shiver up your back and things like that. Every time you got a five one or one a race, you know, the the grandstand standing up and giving you an ovation and things like that must have been great. Yeah, it really was. It really was. Um, well, that's good then. That's good. Then. But obviously, then just looking slightly ahead to next season. Uh, obviously, like you said, you're riding for for Sheffield and you're riding at Birmingham. You know things like that. What's your own sort of aspirations for next season? Well, I kind of get this question like every year, kind of like <laughs> yeah, no what different there then. <laughs> but. Um, I don't really set myself goals or targets in in that sense. I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of see it as maybe limiting myself to just small steps. I, like I want to improve the max that I can, and I want to get as far as I can. So mm-hmm. I just, yeah, always looking to the next match, always trying to learn and set up wise, maybe try a different engine, try different things and mm. yeah, always learning, always trying to improve and always trying to get better. So, um, mm. yeah. Well, fingers crossed that happens and obviously no injuries, you know, because obviously I hate to say it, but you're one of the riders who keep, it does get injured quite a bit, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, and they are spectacular crashes. I must admit, I do remember a few from Milner, you know, you got, <laughs> you got up and walked away from some of them and it was, uh, <laughs> you know, good old days, but, just to turn back the clock a little bit, obviously um, everyone knows who Stefan Nielsen is now, but how did it all start for you? Did you Was you a supporter of Speedway beforehand or did you do motocross and then go into it or something else? Um, my mum and dad were just 
huge Speedway fans. They travelled around not just the country but the world to watch Speedway. And uh, my dad is obviously Danish with the Danish mm. heritage. <clears throat> so I I moved back to Denmark with my dad when I was about ten or eleven, and I uh, I did some eighty cc racing. I don't know if you know anything about that, but it's yeah. basically competitive racing um just like it would be now and mm. uh yeah just with the younger riders of my age and yeah kind of got into that aspect from there um and yeah when i when i turned 15 i came back over to england to start my speedway career um and yeah just jumped into the national league i think signed for scunthorpe in my first season where we had a I was with Steve Worrell then as well, actually. Mm. His brother Richie says, kind of started the same journey with them. They've just come over from motocross. And uh, here we all, uh, my first ever practice over here was at a David Howell training school at Scunthorpe. <laughs> and that was it, the day I got signed. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting journey, I'll say mm. that. Um, mm. But yeah, no, it's, I've just always been part of Speedway. It's the only thing I know. And it's, mm. Anything I will ever know, I guess. <laughs> That's like all of us, mate. All of us who are into Speedway only know Speedway. We say we watch football or rugby or anything else, but it's always going to be Speedway, no matter what anyone else says. It's in the blood, mate. It's in the blood. But it's good to know that, obviously, like you say, your parents are into the sport and everything, and, and you managed to do the ATCC. So who was you sort of like riding against then back then when you were juniors? Is there anyone in particular who's gone on to fame and fortune now since then? Well, as most of the Danish uh, lads that you will have seen, uh, Michael Jepsen Jensen, mm. Mikkel McKielsen, Mikkel Beck, those those young Danish riders which are now my age, uh, mm. used to race against all of them growing up. And uh, did you beat them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's all good though. It's because obviously, you know, in a, in a weird way, it's sometimes nice to compare yourself a little bit to where you where they are to where you are and how you can get to where they are, sort of thing, you know, in the long run. But uh, like you said, you know, you signed for Scunthorpe in 2011, you know, and obviously Scunthorpe went on to win the league and everything, you know, which was obviously great for yourself. And I think was you at reserve for the whole season, wasn't you that year? Yeah, yeah, I was. yeah. Yeah, so how how did you find your first season? Was it a very much a very big learning curve then? Had you not long been on the 500 and things like that then? Yeah, it was um, my second season on 500 CCs. But the, the year before I came to England, I'd done a year in Denmark, riding in the second division in Denmark mm. and kind of learning my trade. And <clears throat> But in Denmark, you only have, I think it was like, 14 meetings a year so it kind oh, okay. of like yeah it, it's good to get started but it wasn't really ever going to be the end game if that makes sense uh, yeah because obviously the more meetings you do the more practice you kind of get you can't you can't compare practice and meeting practice if that makes no. sense uh, yeah so i know what you mean yeah you always but... learn a lot more in meetings and um, mm. yeah so come over to England and if we could ride in both leagues, which was always my aim at the time, to be National League and then try and step up into the championship. Mm. And uh, yeah, then you can have like 40, 50 meetings a year. And that's that's then when you're really learning. Mm. Then you go, oh crap, this is too many meetings I've got now. <laughs> you know, or something, or something like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, did, you manage, did you manage to ride on the yeah, continent much yeah. before you came to England or was it just in Denmark at the time? Um, well, it was just in Denmark, really. I uh, in the ACCs, we did travel a little bit to. Uh, I think we went to Sweden for a, a week, where we rode every day. Um, and yeah, we, we did travel a little bit. I think we went to Poland, and did a, a like a testimonial kind of meeting thing in Poland as well. So yeah, I, I did venture a little bit out. The, the Danes get out quite a bit because they're quite close to Sweden and Poland. Yeah, and kind of. Do, drive there so it's a, it's a bit easier in that sense and uh but yeah um not really any more than that just a couple of odd meetings here and there so what is your local track or club that you signed for then in your first season and to do those 14 meetings um 
Well, everywhere's quite close in Denmark compared <laughs> to England, funnily enough. Um, so I, my first year I rode for Ultra uh, oh, yes, in Denmark, yep. uh, which was about uh, an hour and a half's journey for me, I think, maybe even just an hour. So, mm. But my local club was Greenstead, where I did all my younger years, all my AECC days. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's good then. Do you, have you ever had um, the opportunity to go back and ride again in the Danish league, or are you just solely concentrating on the British league nowadays? Well, I I really did enjoy it, and there was a a time when I I wanted to come back to Denmark um, or wanted to go back to Denmark, hmm. but it's, it just never really worked out. When I when I went to England, I got a British passport which meant that I rode for England. And mm. then that means that in Denmark, I come in on a foreign license, on an English license, oh, okay. which means that, that bumps my grade or average up and uh, getting a team spot when you're a B grade rider, for example, when my level has has only ever been a C, maybe, maybe a B grade. <laughs> the young Danes would all be on D's and I would be on a B and it was just always going to be difficult to get into a team. Mm -hmm. I did speak to a couple of clubs over the years, um, but it's also also with the equipment and stuff. My my dad lives in Denmark now and I had a good opportunity to like go there and I could stay with him and he had a van and we had bikes over there. Mm. But it just ever so well, just slowly but surely made its way over to England to build <laughs> up my my English uh, bikes because obviously we <clears throat> it only ever used to have two bikes, but mm. now when you ride in two leagues in England, if you bend one one night and you've got to ride the next night, you need to have two bikes still. So obviously mm. you had to have three bikes now, four bikes, and yeah, it's. Uh, it's quite tricky in that sense. It just so everything's just been moved over to England, and yeah, I'm just English now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, you've done well there. You stayed there. That's good. That's the main thing. But obviously, like I said, you know, that first season it was a great year for yourself. You know, um, riding with Scunthorpe, such a great side. You know, at the time, you know, of course. Even then, they were had they had success with the likes of Ty and people like that, all in the team previous to you coming over, you know, and that sort of thing. So that success continued, and obviously, then obviously the winning factor continued for the following year because we signed for Mildenham, and that's the year that they won everything in the national league going. And uh, I mean, that must have been a great year for yourself. Because again, I think you came in either at reserve or you were a second string, and then you ended up being the number one by the end of the season. So it was a really good year for yourself. Yeah, it was. Uh... Oh, I always look look back on those first few years over here because they were really, really exciting. Obviously, I won the league with Scunthorpe over Mildenall by one point in the National yeah. League playoff final in the first year. And then the second year, I signed for Mildenall and we won the, the National League playoff final by one point over Dudley. So, um, mm. yeah, it was, it was exciting times back then. And... Uh, yeah, it was really great memories. I've got a lot of the DVDs, and I, I often watch watch them back to kind of yeah, just yeah, the moments were just amazing. So um, yeah, learned a lot in the first few years for sure. Yeah, strolling back through the old archive and things like that, mate. You know, it's always good to look back at that sort of thing. I know, I know from that for myself. But um, yeah, that was a great season. But unfortunately, in the playoff final, I think it was, uh, I think it was yourself and Adam Ryan came together in in that heat fifteen, um, and unfortunately crashed down the start line because obviously that that meeting was at, at Kings End. It wasn't at Mildenhall either. So to yeah. stack the odds even more against Milton or really against a, a very strong Dudley team as it was at the time, you know, and then unfortunately you had a crash. I think it was on coming to start the second lap, if I remember rightly. And then you, you and Adam Williams came together and crashed on the start and finish line. But that was a, a very scary moment for yourself. I'm thinking, oh crap, here we go, sort of thing. Yeah, it was, uh, it's never nice to, to crash, but it was a, uh, that was another big one. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything was on the line though. We, we both just wanted to win, but yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> interestingly enough. Last season, he was obviously mechanic in for Danny King, so mm -hmm. had him in the pits. Um, but yeah, there's <clears throat> as it's just the way the, the, the sport is, isn't it? You kind of yeah. see each other and like move forward and back, and yeah, so I've obviously it was 
it was a big meeting that one it was a big mm. meeting um yeah. yeah, it was a big meeting, but then again, I think towards the end of that season, every meeting was a big meeting for Mildenhall, really, which was good because it brought the crowds in again. And the, well, the, the first couple of years under that new promotion at Mildenhall under Chris Lowe, Michael Lee and Kevin Jolly, you know, the, the crowds were back. The atmosphere was fantastic at, at the track. And, you know, and the, of course, you, you as a rider just thrive off it after a while, you know, and everyone, like I said in the intro, you're a fan's favourite. Everyone loves you by the end of the season, you know. Even if you come into the track and go, a bit of an unknown, don't really know what to expect from yourself and things like that but it's it's always good to know that the fans always appreciated what you did at every club that you rode for yeah absolutely i uh, i always give it 110 percent, and i think a lot of the fans can see that uh, always put in the effort um but yeah just speaking on the promotion there that was a huge factor in my decision to go to Milton over the year after obviously there was a uh, yeah chris louis michael lee kevin jolly Robert Henry is team manager as well. And mm -hmm. I really felt like I could learn something from those guys, obviously mm -hmm. made it to the top in their sport. And yeah, anything I could pick up off them was a, a huge bonus. And I certainly did learn some things from them along the way. Uh, Michael Lee was my engine tuner at the time as well. So really getting to know how my engine worked differently to others, what I could do to improve it, how to set up bikes, which which is basically the hardest part when you're like first starting out. You, mm. Speedway is so complex that you can change one thing one week and it works and the next week on the same track, same engine, same everything, and it just doesn't work. You just, it's just a real head scratcher. So I had uh, a couple of really important people there in my, in my crew that season that, that really helped me get just the, the, the basics and, mm. uh, I've been able to take that with me everywhere since. Well, that's good then, because obviously, like anything, knowledge is key when it comes to these sort of things, you know. And, uh, you know, it's great. You know, again, like I said, you know, you had a great season. And on the individual front on that season, you managed to pick up the British on the 19 championship as well. So your first sort of like real success that you had individually as well. Yeah, that came very much out of the blue. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think I was even in the top six favourites for that meeting. It really was. Uh, a shot in the dark um mm. but yeah just i don't know just grabbed the opportunity with both hands and uh yeah made a name for myself that day i guess mm. looking back. yeah yeah, like you said, you know, a complete underdog. Nobody expected anything probably from you. And you just went out there and having the great season that you were having, you know, it just fell into your place and, and clicked at that night, obviously. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I think it was my second time at Sheffield. I've been there for a, a practice <coughs> um, the year before. So it was a bit of a new track for me. And uh, yeah, it was it was a special night, though, a real special night. And, uh, yeah, many, many great memories from, from that moment. Well, that's great, mate. That's great to hear about that because obviously, like I said, it's a great season. That was, a, And then your second year in the British League was even better. But then obviously the following year, you managed to defend that championship and retain it. So, I mean, that's not I mean feat to, to do back-to-back, -to -back, you know, in anything. So let alone in the 19s. Yeah, I uh, I think there's only one other person who has done done that back-to-back -back in the under-19s, and that's Ty Wolfenden, funnily enough. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'll claim I'll claim that, my claim to fame. Um, yeah. Look good in the CV, uh, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was another good another good meeting, and really, I, I don't know, I, I'm always looking forward, always looking to the future, always looking to to do one better. If It doesn't matter if you win something, I want to win it again and again. Mm. And... Um, mm. Just that sort of mentality, I guess, pushed me, pushed me over the line. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy, good. That's good. Times. Yeah, yeah. Think, of course, it's crazy times. Yeah, thinking back though, it's just like, yeah, really crazy. Um, <laughs> But of course, it, it, you moved on to, to ride for Somerset that year as well. So you, you stepped up the league and things like that. So that must have obviously helped in your preparation for the British on the 19 and the under 21s and everything else that year as well. So that must have been good for yourself. Yeah, the um, the, the second under 19s title of Coventry, I'd just been dropped by Somerset the week before that. Um, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> before their, uh, yeah, their playoff hopes for Somerset. So um, mm. it was. It was just a, a setback, basically. Um, um, the first time that I got sacked uh, from 
a speedway team, and uh, yeah, it was a, a an interesting an interesting time for me because uh, it really hurt, really hurt a lot. Obviously, mm. I, it just yeah hit me with the the professional sport. You know, um, it's it's not always easy, and it's not always plain sailing. It's not always it's not always going to go in your way. You uh, you mm-hmm. you've got to fight for it, and you've got to want it. Um, otherwise, it can quite easily go downhill. And uh, yeah, it was a real low for me. I uh, think I spent the next hour in the in the uh, pits crying, and then uh, a long, sad journey home from Somerset that night. Um, so yeah, there there is ups and downs in speedway. I know that more than anyone now. Mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was just a le- learning curve that part. Yeah, like you said, though, you know, it's just it is a learning curve and that's the way it goes, you know. But obviously you shoot your frustration out by winning in the 19s and that was it. Then, you know, you're you're set. Then you can, you can say, like I say, up there with tie now. So you can't beat that now. You know, so that's the main thing. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Then obviously moving on to the to the next year, um, you decided to sign for uh, Bellevue. Um, and then obviously you're riding for Coventry. Was it Coventry Storm at the time as well? So you mentioned to ride in two leagues, you know, and actually get and and thrive on the experience of the top league as well as riding in the national league and probably taking that by storm as well. Yeah, Storm. I love what you did there. Um, yeah, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that's really interesting because they uh, started a well, it's, I don't even know what it's called, fast track system, I believe. Yeah, in the in the top flight and. Um, yeah, it was re- really weird. Imagine riding in the top league and the bottom league, but not the middle league. It was, yeah. But it was just the way it worked at the time. Um, and yeah, I had several good years with Bellevue there and really kind of, yeah, I, uh, it was really good. I really, really enjoyed riding for Bellevue. It was the old stadium, the old mm. track, Winsham Lane, and uh, very tight and very technical. and Certainly didn't suit my racing style <laughs> at all. So it was, but I had some some good people in the pits there. We had Matty Zagar at number one. Max Frick was obviously really good. Craig Cook, Josh Groschnick. Um <clears throat> Steve Worrell was with me there as my fast track partner as well, actually. So, yeah, everywhere he You can't, goes, you can't keep away from that bloke, can you? You was in the same team as him at the moment and things like that. <laughs> Yeah, no, we've we've seen each other around a lot. He's a really nice guy as well, so um, that's that's worked out quite well. Um, and yeah, obviously Coventry Storm. Uh, I actually lost my number one spot that that year, so it went mm. the opposite way. Um, so yeah, it was. I don't know. Maybe I put a bit more effort into the top league, and that might made the lower league suffer a little bit. And, yeah, I, I don't know if that's if that's something I should be admitting on camera, but um, <laughs> say what you want, just, mate. Say what you want. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of the way it goes. You want to take that next step forward, and mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't say I did it intentionally, but it just kind of happens that way. You kind of when you're when you're learning and you're trying to do your setups and stuff, and you make you just save a couple of the better clutch plates for the mm. the top league and then you know just a few little bits and that bits and bobs like that maybe psychologically mm. um kind of change things for me in, in that sense um but yeah no it was, it was a good time and being able to be in the pits for those for those top riders in in the top league was mm. was really something because like their knowledge setup wise engine wise was very different to what I've been used to. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot from that. Of course, rubbing shoulders with GP boys, like you say, like Matty Zagar and people like that, mm-hmm. and well established stars in the top league now. You know, that must have been, again, the knowledge, again, especially around Kirky Lane, because like you said, it wasn't particularly the, your favourite track. But then again, sometimes going to your worst tracks brings out the best in you for when you go to the other tracks, you know, because obviously um, being down in Eastbourne, you know, it's a tight technical track down there. And at the time, we had Danny Holsley and Lewis Blackbird. So again, the Mildenhall connection right there as our fast track reserves in 2014, you know, and things like that. So yeah, I mean, 
I understand what you're saying because obviously it's not everybody's probably cup of tea at the time. Maybe the new national stadium's more your cup of tea now because obviously it's a bit bigger and a bit faster, you know, but things like that. But then if you, if you go into the 2015 season, you stayed with Bellevue again, again, there's a fast track reserve again, I think it was. And also you were at Ipswich, so you're doubling up between two leagues which are fairly close together as well. So it must have helped yourself. Yeah. Um, the fast track system. We didn't really have much of a choice. Um, it, we kind of, I think it was the teams that picked us from like a list as opposed to negotiating anything with any team. So it wasn't mm-hmm. like I, I had a choice. But um, yeah, it was a good learning experience though. Um, certainly was. Ipswich was a local one for me uh, in the championship, which was it's good. When you're when you're travelling and you're always up and down the country, it's nice to have like one home track which is quite close to you, so that you are not constantly on the road. You have got a little bit of respite, and yeah, it just makes a huge difference if you can set off at like two o'clock instead of having to set off at nine, ten o'clock in the morning <laughs> in the evening. So no, it was a, it was a good balance, um, and yeah, good learning curve. Apes, which was another track that. I really wasn't a fan of, mm. um, but after spending half a year there, I felt like I I really got to grips with that as well. Um, so yeah, it was yeah, just all learning, isn't it? Just mm. learning. It's all got me to this point here today. Yeah. Again, they're, they're two technical tracks. So like you say, you know, not, not necessarily your, your cup of tea track, but at least you can learn how to make probably better starts and mix in with the different riders. Um, I can't remember who was in the Ipswich team then. It must have been likes of Kevin Doolin probably and uh, uh, Morton Rosea was there and, and, and people like that. You know, Cameron Heaps, I think, might have been there still as well. But, you know, again, a great bunch of lads at Ipswich, along with, again, Chris Louie at the helm. Yeah. Um, I think when I was... When I was starting out, uh, the choices that I had, I, I always tried to pick a track that I perhaps wasn't so confident on in the hopes that I would become confident on it and, uh, yeah, just learn learn it. So it was, yeah, I think that that's all from my dad sort of thing. He's always been pushing me to go into uncomfortable situations and really like push myself because if those first few years is where you learn the most and if you can – ride a technical track you can ride any track so the it it was a huge part of the the decisions that put me on the tracks that yeah that I didn't want to necessarily be on so Mm. now hopefully I can reap the rewards from that and I think last year I was pretty consistent and that's kind of always my aim now is Mm. it's not just about being a home track specialist, I want to be able to help my team away from home when they need it the most. Um, so yeah, it's it's been good learning for that. Yeah, because obviously, like you say, no no two track is the same. I mean, look at look at for instance now. I mean, you go somewhere like now, like Plymouth, which is a, again a small technical track, you know, and things like that. You can go there and probably get five, six points maybe now, whereas before you might have gone there and only scored a couple, you know, for example, from that, having that background knowledge of smaller tracks. Yeah, I spent a year at Plymouth as well, funnily enough, which, mm. uh, again, was exactly for one of those reasons. It was always, I didn't like going there as an away rider. It was a really long travel, and then to get on the bike and ride a really bumpy, small small track was really difficult. Um, but once you ride there week in, week out, you can kind of make it adaptations to your setup, and you kind of get really into the track and kind of yeah because you when you four races you know yourself that four races isn't a long time to to get the right setup Mm. especially if you don't pick the engine that perhaps probably suited that track the best if you if you've got i don't know like it just you make the wrong change you you Mm. try something and it doesn't work in your second race and maybe when you're a reserve and you only get three races, you kind of get pulled out of a ride. You really don't have a lot of time. And that's where the experience now comes in, that you more often than not, you make the right decision to go the right way, set up wise. And yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest change, really. 
Mm. Yeah, like you say, you know, you can like you, if you rock up to a meeting, though, you're going to have three rides. You know, you're going to go with that attitude of uh, whatever I do, I ain't going to do anything different, you know, and things like that. Unless you're on a three ride maximum or something like that. But most of the time, you can go out as number seven. And you go you go heat two, heat four, and then you're out to like heat fourteen or twelve, and that's half the meeting gone. You know, by that time you're cold and, and everything else in between. But just going back to the, the 2015 season, it was obviously a good individual season for yourself because you come third in the British Under 21 final. You know, um, and then obviously you qualify for the world on the 21 final Grand Prix series, whatever you want to call it, you know, where you did the three rounds and everything else like that. So, that, again, opening up your knowledge to the the big fast tracks against, I think you what you was against the likes of Smarzik in your season, and you had uh, Patrick Dudek, I think it was another one in there, you know, and yeah, so you had a really easy run in the modern 21s. Yeah, really easy. <laughs> um, uh, I remember the first. The first under twenty one world event that I went to, um, it was a qualifier in Croatia. Mm. Um, Bartosz Smarslik rocked up with his monstrous van, and he had five bikes in the back, four helmets. <laughs> yeah, like four clutch coolers. It's like crazy. Like why? <laughs> but yeah, it was a that was a real big um, well, eye opener, shall we say? Mm. Um, to just yeah see how prepared they are um, and yeah how really like top notch all their equipment was and there was me and me and I think I went with Steve and we travelled together uh, in this, in his van to well yeah to Croatia and we was trying to squeeze in four bikes and two toolboxes <laughs> and in his van and like yeah. Uh, but yeah, an eye opener, and uh, yeah, it was a a good year though. Obviously, mm. qualifying for it was really special. Um, I did that in a a runoff in Terenzano against yeah. Paco Castagna. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was it was where I wanted to be though at the time. Mm. It was it was just like it was normal. It was something that yeah, I was just gearing myself up. Um, obviously, <clears throat> a bit different in the way things have turned out now. Um, I, I obviously, when the under twenty ones disappeared, it's kind of like stalled a little bit my my career. I feel like so, mm -hmm. lots of injuries, um, and yeah, some big injuries to overcome. But yeah, here we are. We looking forward to a new season, though. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to a new season. Hopefully we can get things right this time and uh, yeah, what's the point? Oh, I'm sure you will, mate. I'm sure you will. All that, all that uh, sort of knowledge and everything, you know, you picked up along the way and uh, and things like that. But um, you know, I mean, like you say, you've run against those sort of blokes, you know, and you and it must be almost like um, you're in awe of it. So you think, well, this is where I can be, you know, and that sort of thing. You know, if I just get if I just click it in England and I'll get seen to go abroad, you know, that sort of thing. That must have been in the back of your mind going into the series of it being more of like a, like I say, like an eye-opening experience more than you actually going ahead and saying, oh, I'm going to win the World in two ones this season. Yeah. Um, the travel side of things was, was like difficult as well. And, uh, just having to be organised and um, had a couple of sponsors come on board. For that journey as well, which was nice. Um, but yeah, just flying out to an event, and then your mechanics are driving your your vehicle and your bikes there, which is quite spectacular. Um, <laughs> never thought you kind of like reached that stage. Um, so jet yeah, setting the life, in the life of a jet setter. That's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good. Um, but yeah, that, it's just crazy to think about. I. I watch every Grand Prix now on TV and I, I look at those riders and I have like memories or stories I could say about all of them and like over the years. Oh, oh, okay, let's have a listen to them then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, let's not go into that. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's no, just but, memories. Well, that, that's good, but I mean, I've got a bit of. Hopefully this is going to work because uh, first time at doing the, the share screen live. But um, I've got a bit of footage here of you from the Parlour Beats round. I think it was your best uh, result that night where you got a second behind Brady. And I mean, 
you know, it, it must have been, you know, like I said, very much an eye opening experience riding something like part of beats where it's fast and flat and everything else like that. So it must have suited you a little bit. Yeah, that track was really good. Um, really loved it. It was so wide, but you could only really use the inside half because it's it was so wide and so flat. It was not much bank in there. But yeah, I've watched this one on YouTube several times myself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you normally sit back and then analyse how you got on? Absolutely. Um, it's something I try and get into with all uh, my teams to get like the videos from the home meetings, especially mm. obviously there. And it doesn't really help getting them all at the end of the year. You kind of like <laughs> need to get them as they're going along so you can learn from each uh, incident. Yeah, or, uh, yeah. To learn where I'm gaining time, where I'm losing time, because you really like can see that on on video, whereas it can be quite difficult to to understand or process yourself. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I mean, just looking at you here, you I mean you're battling out for second place, but you're not off the pace with these boys at all. You're really battling to try and get round uh, uh, Victor Palavara there, and uh, you know you get there in the end, but it makes you makes you work hard for it. <clears throat> Yeah, um, the well, yeah, just making the outside work there. But I think uh, there was I was with Bellevue at the time and had Mark uh, Mark Lemon in the pits, and we made mm. a big drastic change for my fourth ride, and it it really like backfired. It wasn't wasn't the way that I needed to go setup wise um, after that good ride there. Mm. But, um, again, that was just learning when you're well, well. Yeah, at the time it was just I've got nothing to lose if you know what I mean against yeah. those riders. Um, it was just huge, huge experience for me. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Trying to like race against those boys is is pretty cool. But you also got selected to ride in the under twenty one Ball Team Cup uh, semi final. Unfortunately, I don't think Great Britain progressed. Um, but it was a case of again that must have been nice to be feel like you got selected to be part of the team and just try and move forward with the, with the country. Yeah, um, uh, in that video you just showed there as well, I was in my Team GB Kevlar that mm. I got from that event. Um, so yeah, huge honour, huge honour to be invited uh, to represent Team GB. Um, yeah, obviously the boys this well this season just been they they managed to win the big one, didn't they? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was spectacular, um, and that was obviously well, still is my aim, you know, to try and and get that far and and go and yeah and, and ride for Team GB and at the top top level. Um, seems a little bit more of a bigger distance to get through now as I'm getting older. Time's obviously not always going to be on my side. I, I certainly feel a lot older and uh, I don't bounce from my crashes as well as I used to either. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to get there, trying to get there and I'll keep working hard and, and keep putting in the max effort every year and, and see how far, just how far I can go. I think a lot of it nowadays is trying to get your foot in the door with places, whether it's clubs, promoters, managers, or whatever. Like, that. if you get your foot in the door with a lot of it, you know, you can then open that door up and explore and, and explore it, sort of thing. You know, it's really, really hard to sometimes explain to the to the average fan about how it is for a spirit rider because it is hard to obviously maintain your spot. You know, um, it's hard to get into a team, someone like Paul, for example, and then it's hard to keep it, to keep your spot. So you've got to be consistent that way around. And also you want to get spotted to go and ride somewhere else, i.e. someone like, I don't know, like Bellevue or Sheffield, you know, in the top league, you know, and things like that. So you've got to try and do that. And then you want to try and maybe go on the continent and try and get spotted down there. So it's very, very hard that, you know, you're always battling to try and get noticed and you've got to try and beat these people, you know, and things like that. Obviously, when you're younger, it's a bit different because you have all these under-19s, under-16s, under-21s, under-23 championships you can all take part in, you know. So that's a bit easy. But obviously, like you say, when you get a bit older, time's against you, you know. But as long as you're enjoying your racing, you know, that's the main thing. Because if you stop enjoying it, that's when everything goes downhill, unfortunately. Yeah, no. There's still a few people that didn't make it to the GPs until they were in their thirties, and like, I know they just needs one little thing to click for you to like go from being bang average to having a really great season, and like, 
maybe going up to heat leader in the in the different teams and yeah it, it just needs a little thing to click sometimes and uh, that's what we're obviously searching for every year um, trying different things I think for this year I went or the year just gone I went to small sprockets the mm. big sprockets which was uh, in an in an attempt to slow the rotation of the back wheel and and weight as well um, to try and yeah, make that another step and we got something else planned for this season. I won't quite reveal it yet, but um, there's, there's you bring it the six fifty. That's what it is. It's a big old six fifty. Yeah. Next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, <laughs> always things we're trying to work on behind the scenes that obviously a lot of fans don't don't know. Um, so yeah, we're we work. We're still working hard now, trying to get like everything sorted and and be as as well prepared as as we can be because uh, the season really does, once it starts, it starts. And if you're going well, the guest booking opportunities come available and you can <laughs> you can really end up riding five, six times a week. And uh, mm. if you're not prepared before that season starts, that really, really can hamper you as well, a lot. So, uh, yeah, still working hard, still working hard now. Well, that's it, mate. That's all you can do. And like you say, keep trying, keep experimenting, you know, and, and just, just things like that, mate. But like I say, you know, enjoyment's the key, isn't it? But then obviously after having such a great year in 2015, then you moved on to, to was it, to uh, to Swindon. And then also, like you say, you had that, that season with Plymouth. So again, two slightly stark contrasting tracks. One's pretty big and the other one's pretty tiny. So that must have kept you on your toes for that one season. Yeah, it was, again, it was something I was actually actively focusing on at the time, trying to do good on different tracks. And, yeah, it was a key part of, of riding for those teams. Uh, it worked out quite well because Swindon was on the on the Thursday night and I would then stay at my mechanics at the time and then we'd travel to Plymouth uh, for the Friday evening. So it, it worked quite well that year, um, but it's not always not always that easy and not always the case but um that that year in particular was good because uh obviously learning from the top boys on a thursday night and then on the friday night racing in the championship and i spent most of the year at reserve for plymouth and picking up extra rides and uh yeah i was i was pretty consistent that year as well so it's it was it was a good time for me good time that one bit of a trunk guard in reserve then were you yeah, I, I had a good year at reserve, and I, um, I, obviously Swindon as well was another track that I wasn't particularly great on. But having the likes of Jason Doyle as your number one, <laughs> like able to show you a few things with the setups and uh, mm. yeah, his workshop as well, which was really cool. Um, yeah, he just had engines lined up all the way around his <laughs> workshop. <laughs> Yeah. Did the chairman say to you pick one? <laughs> I wish, I wish. Um, no, but he's he's a top quality rider, um, mm. obviously. So, yeah, anything I could pick up from, from the likes of him was a, a big big step for me. Exactly, because like you said, having that someone who you can sort of look up to. I mean, obviously, going back again to this year, oh sorry, last year now, with the likes of Rory Schlein and Danny King, you still had those sort of guys that you could up, look up to and things like that. And obviously, having your mate Steve there, who keeps following around to every club you seem to ride at, being there as well, always helped to have that little nucleus of riders that you could look up to and ask for advice because you need that as a rider still. Yeah, yeah, you do. Um... Yeah, it was it, it really was spectacular with those with those boys. I know them so well now, and uh, yeah, um, got your own little WhatsApp so, group, have you? <laughs> um, no, no. Steve Warr, I'm still waiting for a reply from Steve Warren from the last WhatsApp I gave him, actually. So um, I doubt. One asked how long ago that was. So one asked that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, long time ago, long time ago. Yeah. But um, no, again, I mean, then you move on to the likes of uh, 2017. You went back to Scunthorpe again, you know, again, it, it, this time you're a solid championship sort of rider at this time, you know. So going back to someone's like familiar ground must have been good for yourself. You're feeling confident and, and hopefully trying to be the number one at Scunny at the time. 
Yeah, I, um, mm-hmm. I had a, a, a weird couple of years where the teams just weren't coming around for me um, mm-hmm. in the winters. And I, I had a year, I think it might have been just then or just before then, um, where I actually came over to England to ride without even having a team spot. Um, it was it was a weird one because I, I was working in Denmark in uh, during the winters at the time. Mm. Uh, it just yeah no team spot materialized um and then i got the opportunity from scunthorpe which was um uh, very welcome at the time um and it just felt like going going back to to home roots it was uh yeah really really good to be back the uh the crowd there were really supportive of me as well and uh i, I was there for a couple of years uh at this stage and um yeah even though i had a couple of big injuries uh, while riding with them um the fans and the support and the management that was there or are there was mm-hmm. very supportive of me and um yeah it's, it's nice to have that sort of uh, connection with them i know uh, it's not always so easy to to get that um but i really felt very welcome and Felt like I was part of the, the furniture there, and uh, yeah, it was good. That was good. Yeah, I mean, like you say, if you can go back to a club after having, well, they've been about six years, seven years away from uh, that particular club to come back and feel like nothing has really changed. You know, again, that's credit to yourself and also to the to the club uh, as to say like okay we're stand by you sort of thing you know there's no hard feelings that you left this uh x amount of years ago or anything like that because they know that you had to progress and things like that but again you went from 2011 coming over being uh very uh like a uh, very green eye and bushy tail sort of thing to now uh, an established championship rider you're in the championship with scunthorpe so like you say you know and again unfortunately with the teams they looked very good on paper but unfortunately, for some reason or another, they just didn't quite click. And maybe it wasn't right all at the same time. I mean, you had the likes of uh, Jake Allen in the team and you had, uh, what would it have been, Danny Ayres, Josh Alty, Simon Lambert, Jason Garrity, just to name but a few who you spent time with. You know, and it, it must have been frustrating more than anything to feel like, well, we've got a team here who could win something, but we haven't quite got there in the end. Yeah, yeah. Um... We, we did make it to the Knockout Cup final that year. Um, unfortunately, Workington beat us in it in the end. Um, but yeah, no, there was, that was, was another good year. Like the, the team spirit in the camp was, was good. Mm. And uh, yeah, we, we wanted to bring Scunthorpe back to, back to the top. And um, it, it didn't quite work out, but we did make a Knockout Cup final, which is also solid achievement. Um, mm. And yeah, always looking looking for the future, looking for the next year there. Um, so yeah, it, it it was good. It was good riding with those riders. Um, I, I enjoyed it a lot. And funny enough, I've got a bit of footage here from one of those seasons. So <laughs> with a good race with you and Jason Garrity. So uh, you know, it um, might be it he, might be a good little race this one. So yeah, Heat Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is some your number two in the team, so yeah, you know, I mean, against uh, some tough opposition in this one, but I think it was some more like some good team riding more than anything else was, which was the the key to this in the end. Yeah, the team spirit that year was really good as well. We we all worked together as a team, and uh, mm. yeah, and you can see I'm, I'm trying to look for him, but he he wasn't quite there. Um, but yeah, never give up, you know. Um, Garrity is, well, he's pretty spectacular when he wants to ride that fence. He's, <laughs> he doesn't mind touching it. So, <laughs> too scary for me, too scary for me. But Yeah, know, so your best bet is to stay on that inside line and hopefully nobody goes around you. <laughs> yeah. Um, trying to cover the inside and the outside is, is tricky, but if you've got someone helping you on the outside there, you can kind of just make it work. Mm. But, um yeah, it wasn't an easy race, that's for sure. Um, no, but it is one of those sort of ones I, I can imagine that uh, that you look back on and you think, actually, no, this was actually a really kind of uh, fun little race in the end, really, more than anything. Yeah, I've watched that one back many times as well. There's 
there's not much footage of me out there on the internet that I haven't seen, I assure you. Um, no. But yeah, I, I like watching back and, and trying to learn things from it as well, because when I went to Scunthorpe next time, for example, and having that knowledge of, well, yeah, just seeing what the other line was, um, mm. yeah, just trying to learn from it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did ride the outside there at one point. Just one <laughs> point. There was one video of me riding the outside there, I think, somewhere. <laughs> oh, at least, I got, at least you got it on uh, on uh, a video, then you can see that actually, yes, I did ride the outside line. You know, it did work once, and I've never tried it again. <laughs> no, um, it, was the, it was the last meeting of the season there, mm. um, and I just kind of I don't know went into it with the mentality that kind of. I'm just going to give it absolutely everything and, you know, I'm going to ride the outside. Whether the outside's quickest or not, it doesn't matter. I'm going to ride it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going that way. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's, uh, no, yeah. that, that's good, though. I mean, it's good to know that you can go back and say, that's a got nice little club there. Everyone's looked after very, very well there. And obviously, you spent, like say, three seasons there with them, you know, up until obviously when then COVID hit you know, which kind of balls everything up after 2019 sort of thing, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, how did you – how was 2020 for yourself? I mean, obviously, I, I can imagine that you built yourself up, ready to go for the season, and all of a sudden, boom, lockdown. So how did you manage to keep yourself busy during that time? Yeah, it's um, – well, I didn't do too much, to be completely yeah. honest. Um, I just kept fit because it was – it was the lockdown happened, but it wasn't like okay, there's no speedway this year. We're just gonna start again 2021. It was always the plan was always to get back racing that year. First of all, we had lockdown, and it was like okay, we'll wait a couple of months and then we'll start the season. So mm -hmm. it was yeah, it was never just okay. Look forward to 2021. So it was still having to keep fit, keep ready, and just be ready to go as soon as we, we got the green light to go racing. Mm. Um, it, was, it was a challenging time, I would say, because you didn't really know what to do. Like, I thought about getting a job, but then <laughs> yeah. can, can you start a job and then say, sorry, I've got to ride Speedway now? Like... <laughs> There was but just, I did. Just... I, I found a job and I'm still in it and I, and I rode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just, I don't know, weird for me. I didn't really, I didn't really want to be that person who lied to people and kind of like said, no, I've got nothing else going on. Can I have the job? And then all of a sudden just drop them like, yeah, like nothing. So it was, yeah. um, but yeah, it was, it was a challenging time. It really was. Um, mm. Didn't know what we was going to be doing, how it would all work out when, when COVID. Uh, well, it's still here now, isn't it? So yeah. It, um, fun, I actually have COVID right now, right here, oh. right now. Oh Christ! Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't feel too bad with it, and yeah, but I did a test today, and I'm positive. So. Yeah, self isolating at the moment. Um, it gave me a perfect opportunity to talk to you, though. There um, you go. There's a, oh, every cloud is a silver lining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I can I'm kind of tell you've been isolated into a room, you know, to the furthest part of the house, it looks like, you know, and that's it. You know, just keep them in there, you know, keep them out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, yeah, we, we all had it in the household this last mm. week. So, uh, yeah, it's. And it's been yeah mm. crap really but um it's, it's unfortunately it's the way of the new life nowadays unfortunately mate more than anything you know it's things like yeah. that but uh, I just want to put something out there to the to the viewers who are who are watching this and hopefully you're enjoying it and uh, and getting a good insight into Stefan's career so far. But um, make sure to share this out to your friends and everything. And if you want to ask ask a question, feel free to leave a comment uh, on on uh, the Facebook or the YouTube and things like that, so I can actually see them and then I can ask Stefan some questions. But um, I have got one question that's popped up. It's from my old man. We can't spell your name mm -hmm. right for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> your name now called Stephen. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah. he's asking, uh, have you ever done any grass track or long track racing? I did actually do grass track. Um, 
Yeah, I started when I was six. I had a nice purple machine. Um, <laughs> I was racing, racing against Simon Lambert and Scott yeah. Campos, which was, yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, I think my local club at the time was Threatenham mm. um, in Norwich. Like, and, uh, yeah. It was, yeah, I, I enjoyed that as well. It was certainly different. Um, I I think in the end I preferred the smoother tracks to the uh, <laughs> bumpy bumpy grass track style. Um, but no, it was also part of my uh, yeah my I don't know youth growing up getting to, to where where I am. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was a good time. That's good. So then, no no thoughts of going back onto the grass track or long track then just stick with the speedway. <laughs> No, definitely no, no going to back to grass track. I was, uh, yeah, too bumpy for me. I, I just, yeah, I prefer the speedway. I, I kind of always wanted to put my all into something. I've, uh, I've done quite a lot of sports and played football as well. My dad was a football coach growing up, so uh, yeah, I, I've done a lot of my sports. I was into table tennis as well. I did that for several years. Um, so, yeah, but it kind of, you kind of, you're growing up and you're kind of thinking, instead of doing one different sport every day of the week, it would be more beneficial to put all your eggs in one basket and like really give it everything. And I know there's not many uh, speedway riders or not many people that have the opportunity to become a speedway rider. Whereas football, for example, there's a lot more, there's a lot easier ways. To to get into into football, so I I decided to go the speedway route growing up and really put put my all into it. And uh, yeah, here we are today. I I do feel I don't know blessed, I guess, yeah. with the opportunities that I've had growing up. I know not every not every child will have had the luxuries that I have had and the the support that I've had from my family and now girlfriend as well and, and the kids as well so yeah I'm, uh, it's it's interesting to look back on I'm, I'm really like I don't know getting emotional about it <laughs> so. yeah. like, don't have to cry if you don't want to but it would look good on the video if you did cry <laughs> <laughs> yeah not, not this time I'll save no. that save that for this time <laughs> Yeah, no, but it is sometimes good just to to reminisce on on like the past and things like that, and then just realise you know how far you have come. You know, like you say, we again just hit back on that first season with Scunny where you're a reserve. You know, just learning the ropes, and then all of a sudden, boom, you've won a, a senior championship with the, with Paul um, and the cup and everything. You know, and, and surrounding yourself with good good people. You know, and things like that. But that, again, that's the that's a journey of a spirit rider. You know, you, if you can if you get your put in the door with several clubs. I mean, like you say, going back, you had Doyle as your captain and your number one. Not a bad bloke to look up to. Plus you had ex-rider Alan Roster as team manager. So, you know, and I can imagine it was a laugh a second with Roscoe and things like that. When you were doing well, obviously, I can imagine he was a bit not if you were losing and things like that. But, you know, I mean, again, figureheads that you have that you give you a chance to look up to. But did you have any... We're going back to, again to your ATCC days, did you have anyone like uh, Hans Nilsson or Eric Gunderson or anyone like that point you in some sort of direction very, very, very early on? Eric Gunderson, funny you mentioned him. He uh, was very much part of my ATCCs. He, he travelled uh, with us to the world, well, I guess it's called World Under 18s, but it's mm. not really. It was the basically the ACC equivalent of the world championships. Um, I, I qualified for that one year and he traveled with the 20 Danes that qualified. I say that like it's normal. I, I was <laughs> yeah, at the time. So, <laughs> but yeah. No, and he, he was going around on his uh, mobility scooter and uh, yeah, just really being part of it, very passionate about the team and the t- togetherness, which was really uh, really special as well, like um, yeah, a real togetherness in in the nation, and really supported supported us. And uh, he, he would travel everywhere, uh, all the speedway meetings. He he would be there, and he would be able to like 
just give you advice on how to sit on the bike, which, mm. uh, yeah, he, he could still tell you exactly how he did and, mm. like, yeah, the things that he did to help himself and improve himself. He just relayed that on to all of us. And if you're willing to learn and you're willing to, like, hear him out and, like, what he says, if you really take it on board. And, um, yeah, that was that was. Yeah, really special as well just like now thinking about it like you it's just crazy <laughs> just crazy <laughs> really crazy that mm. i've had so many different people that have like really been in the top of the sport and mm. like been able at some stage of my career to to, to give me some advice for me to be able to mm. try and learn mm. from and uh, yes yeah, so, some have been different to others um mm. Oh. Yeah, we're sliding now. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, very special. Hmm. But like, as, like you said, you know, you, you make yourself sound like he's very, very normal for the ATCC kids. You know, like say twenty from Denmark qualified, ten from Sweden, probably five from Finland or whatever it was. No, because it wasn't that sort of like over a weekend in that World Championship, like on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday type of thing, was it back then? Yeah, we uh, we we travelled to. Um, Poland. Mm. We had the, the meeting at Lublin. Uh, we had uh, qualifiers on the Friday, Friday night. We travelled on the Friday, qualifiers on the Saturday, the final on the Sunday. I think. Um, but yeah, we all the Danes obviously booked into the same hotel. We all <laughs> like went out that evening, had a meal, but like, that sort of stuff. And it was very, very professional. Um, yeah, that was that was how it how it went, how it worked, and um, yeah, um, Brady Kurtz was there as well. I remember racing against Brady Kurtz because we was the well, there was three of us with Jason Crump bikes basically. Oh and right, I, was, I had Jason Crump bike covers, colours. <laughs> interesting seeing him walking around the pits these days. That's crazy, um, but yeah. He was my idol growing up and still is. So we had we had three riders there, and there was Mikkel Beck, there was me and Brady Kurtz, and we all had Jason Crump bike covers and uh, yeah, mud guards and stuff. So yeah, that was that was the day I met Brady Kurtz. Oh, <laughs> and you've raced against him ever since, really. <laughs> yeah, last season, obviously riding with Paul, he was staying at Midlows and. Uh, I spent a couple of nights in Midlows as well over the season, and yeah, just sitting, sitting in like Neil Middleditch's living room, just chatting away and yeah, watching videos and stuff. There's yeah, it's crazy. Chatting all things Speedway, basically, because I can imagine Midlows yeah. got tons of stories he could not tell us on here, but he could tell everyone else, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he he certainly got some stories, Midlow. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, there's well, yeah, great stories though, um, especially to to just listen to and yeah, like the things that they got up to a few years ago was uh, very different to how it kind of what works now. I think. Um, yeah, I think everything's just kind of changed in the last ten years, twenty years. So. Mm. No, but it's good because it was always interesting to know how, like, uh, the youth system for each rider I've, I've spoken to. Um, I say this is episode number 40, and, you know, I've heard so many different ways of people coming through the ranks and all that sort of thing. And, I mean, it's, we read about the ATCC in, in the Speedway Star magazine and things like that. We hear uh, Eric's side of it. But, obviously, to hear a rider who's been through that system, you know, it's very, very interesting to hear because, obviously, don't you ride those ATCC bikes to, like, you're 16 and then you jump on the 500? I mean, it might have, might have changed now with the 250 coming in, but I'm saying is that you probably did the whole apprenticeship so you were 16 and then onto the 500. It's a big old jump from one to the other. Yeah, I, I was actually talking to my mate about this the other day. I... I remember my first ever go on a 500cc bike which was <laughs> yeah. at my local town in Denmark in Grinstead. And uh, I, I'd done my practice session, my normal practice session that we had um, racing on the 80cc. And then there was a 500cc like, that we could have a go on because I was 
14, I think 14 at the time. So when you hit 15, 16, that was kind of like when you kind of made the jump. But before then, you were always you always just wanted to give it a go, didn't you? Um, uh, yeah, it was it was possible to give it give it a go. And I, yeah, just freewheeling it into the corners, and then like putting the accelerator on, coming out of the corners, and it gets a bit of a slide on. It was yeah, really cool. Um, yeah, but I, I did out before then in England. I uh, hired, I think we had the Kings Lynn track at one point. Um, and I just bought a bike off Sean Tacey. Oh, Christ, it's um, going back a few years. <laughs> it's going back a few years. I was, I was 11, I think. Yeah. 11, and I had my first go on a 500cc bike, but it had like a screw in the throttle, so I could only give it half throttle. All oh, right, play um, it safe. <laughs> yeah, 11 years old going on a 500cc bike was, uh, yeah, something that I never thought I would experience that is for sure um but it was yeah just the opportunities that I've had growing up is very different to everyone else I guess mm. uh, yeah like you said the the Danish version was uh it, I, I guess I picked English in in that way because there was a lot of Danes a lot of good Danes um coming through at the time that I was and I didn't want to just be one out of like fifty, if that makes sense. I wanted to be yeah. a little bit special, and uh, yeah. So I, I, I did. I, I changed to English at the time. Got my British passport. Rode in the national league to get more meetings under my belt and ride that that route. But yeah, I see all the Danes that. that now come back over and start riding over here and I speak Danish with them. I speak <laughs> Danish. So yeah, it just different different journeys to get to the same place really. Um, but yeah. are you are you like the like the Danes? Like you try and always that extra bit harder to try and beat them because they are Danish and you you know and things like that. Or is it a case of, you know, okay, you got me once, I'll get you next time type thing. Um I don't, I don't really ever hold any grudges or anything like that. Um, yeah, I just speak to them in the pits and, yeah, we have a bit of a laugh. And, like, obviously, they all have a, a few memories of when we used to ride together in the 80 CCs and we kind of, like, live live on that a little bit and, you know, spend some time together growing up and kind of, yeah, just know each other a little bit more so we, we have that little bit that we can we can talk about that you don't always have with with new people so mm. uh, it's it's very different though uh, very different and I, I always get told off by uh, well my teams for speaking danish in the pits because they don't know rory was a, a big part of that and danny king and steve Worrell, whenever i spoke danish it was like <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it's good, the, 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 good they're probably worried that you're talking down to them. They couldn't understand a word you were saying, but you know you're saying something about them, <laughs> and things like that. Well, but, I probably have said stuff about them in Danish <laughs> over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we won't. We won't ask what they were, but yes, we, I think people get the idea, <laughs> you know, more than anything. Yeah. But um, so when you have like a one of your Danish friends or something like that who's just starting out in speedway and things like that, have you and they've come over? Have you like shown them the ropes of your mechanic for them, taking them around a little bit just to show them bits and bobs, or you just left them to do it themselves? Uh, interesting story, actually, because obviously we had Benjamin Basso signed for Paul halfway through this year. Um, mm. He was, well, he's slightly too young, so that he, like, I never see him uh, on 80 CCs or anything when I was growing up. But um, obviously, having had that experience and the knowledge of, Danish as well, so I could help him if he struggled a little bit. But everyone over there, they learn English growing up, so English is not really ever a, a problem. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting like story. I felt like it was my sort of responsibility to kind of help him settle in as quick as possible, and um, yeah, try and tell him about the tracks and be there for him if he needed anything bike wise or anything. We can 
it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to get stuff um, because you don't know any of the spares vehicles or where to get bits and bobs and yeah loads of little things behind the scenes that I I did to try and really help him settle in and, and score big points and mm. yeah it was uh, it was good fun though that's just part of growing up though mm. I was that young kid at one point coming <laughs> in and like getting experience from or getting told from everyone else now now I'm at the stage where I'm a bit older and I kind of know a lot more things and I can mm. try and pass on my knowledge to to them and he's he was certainly a young up and coming dame, plenty of enthusiasm for the sport, plenty of uh, will and determination. And uh, yeah, he had a, had a good year and propelled us to the titles. So uh, yeah, great moments. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know much about the kid, to be honest. I've only seen bits on YouTube and bits on Facebook, but he looks like the real deal. And I mean, obviously, like anything, I think he took him a couple of, th- couple of two, three meetings to, to get settled, you know, because obviously coming from the Danish tracks or the Swedish tracks where he was riding to then to the pool and then all, like you say, the different surfaces, different sizes of tracks, you know, and everything else. But just a bit unfortunate he's gone to Glasgow and he's gone to Peterborough, you know, so you won't be seeing much of him unless you ride against him. No, no. Um, but yeah, it was like the tracks is always something we talk about. Uh, the Danish tracks are very different to English and well, every continent track is different to English. There's a, a lot more tricky English tracks here. Um, so there's, but we, we could pass on that sort of knowledge before we get there and set up why is he has a good ballpark of where to be because we've told him basically. Um yeah, I remember his uh, first, my first ever like meeting of him. He um, he was coming in for our meeting at Red Car, mm. and we turned up, and he yeah he put his earphones in and he went for a run <laughs> before the meeting. It was like an hour before the meeting, just before we got changed. He he went for a like five kilometer run, I think, which just I don't know. <laughs> As you do. Taking, <laughs> taking professionalism to a, a whole new level. Um, yeah, a lot of us looked at the time, but obviously as things are getting more professional and you don't see riders drinking in the bar after meetings anymore. And <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it's gone. And now instead we go for runs before the meetings to uh, warm up. I always remember going to, to, to the Kings Lynn you know, in recent times and seeing them on the push bikes, you know, and th- things like that. And you think that is how professional it's got to be now to try and match the, the foreigners and things like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the Team GB setup they've got now is second to none, as it has been proven by winning the Speed of Nations. Um, but, I mean, for yourself to be a part of that at the early stages of that sort of thing and then seeing how it's progressed now, like you said, probably just makes you that a little bit more hungry to try and get back into it, the Team GB sort of uh, frame of mind if you can and that sort of thing. But, you know, you don't. some of the fans don't see what goes on behind the wall of the pits with the blokes warming up and things like that. Like you say, because, uh, you know, you see the young kids, they say, going for five kilometre runs or whatever they're doing, you know, and things like that. And you think... You know, you could be knackered before you even start, mate. You know, and <laughs> stuff like that. But you know, so what's your sort of uh, regime then for warming up? Then do you have a do you, do you go for a five k run or do you just do you stretches? <laughs> um, it's not a five k run, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I do my my normal jog and like um, mm-hmm. yeah, just stretch. Um, but yeah, my own routine it's always the same. It doesn't matter where I go, always the same routine. And like uh, pasta salad in the van on the way there, <laughs> always, uh, a big one as well. So, uh, mm. no, just yeah, developing different things as I've I've got grown up and got more experience. Um, mm. Yeah, so everyone everyone does something different, though, don't they? It's always exactly. Exactly. No, no, no. Two riders exactly the same, you know, because you you look mm. over the pitch thinking, well, why are they doing that way? I do it this way, you know. What, what? Hang on, what are they doing? That I don't. Yeah, it's like almost like a mind game before you even start. Sometimes. Yeah, a lot of it is mind games. Yeah, to be honest, just if you if you look sharp and you look fit and you look ready, it. You know, I don't know. It puts people off, doesn't it? They kind of like. 
they look at look over to you but look up at you and then you're kind of one step ahead of them I guess and when you get to the tape so um, yeah, there's a lot more mind games than you think mm-hmm. yeah yeah tell me about it I know all about that I had I, I when I was wrong I had psychology and everything so you know which did help you know eventually but uh yeah, it's just keep, like I say, keep the love for the sport more than anything. But uh, I'm going to wrap it up for tonight, Stefan. Thanks for being on the show, mate. Uh, hopefully you, you feel a bit better as the, as the interview went on. You know, I didn't feel as nervous, you know, and things like that. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a, been a pleasure. I, uh, yeah, obviously I've, I've known you for a, a lot of years now. And, um, yeah, I really, really hope I can support this as well. I'll give it a like and uh, share it around <laughs> and uh, yeah do my bit to try and uh, propel you up the ladder way appreciate it mate all goes a long way there's I say if you to anyone out there who's not liked or subscribed to the youtube channel or to like the pages on facebook you know they're all on there all the shows all the other 39 episodes are on there i'm still trying to get many many more people to come on the show um there is another show to come there will be an episode 41 um whether that will be live or pre-recorded is to be confirmed but uh whoever who the next guest is is a big guest so it could be live it could be pre-recorded just keep following the channels more than anything but tonight thank you stefan much appreciated mate you know hopefully you've enjoyed it and to everyone out there who's watched it tonight make sure you share it it will be out there and uh cheers stefan much appreciated mate thank you thank you very much mm-hmm.